Sit, stand, kneel, lie prostrate. What are we doing in adoration? When I was 16 years old, I attended a Steubenville conference, and at this conference, the bishop exposed the Eucharist for adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. This is my first time encountering Jesus in adoration, and my life changed. So I came back home to my diocese, and I found a perpetual adoration chapel. I walked in the chapel, and I quickly realized that I didn't know what I was supposed to do during adoration. How am I supposed to pray? So obviously, I know I'm not the only one that has experienced this. So one of the first things that you might recognize whenever you go in an adoration chapel is there are kneelers. This is proper because Eucharistic adoration, exposition of the Blessed Sacrament is a liturgical action and it's proper to kneel before Jesus Christ exposed in the Blessed Sacrament. However, whenever we go in adoration, what we might find is that if we kneel too long, our knees might start to hurt really bad. And if they're hurting, our focus may go away from Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament onto ourselves. That's not good. That's why it's okay at some point to transition from kneeling down, if you can kneel, um, to sitting down or lying prostrate. Whatever posture you get in, you wanna make sure that you're not being too ascetical to the point where you can't focus on God, but you also don't wanna be too comfortable to where it's easy to drift off and daydream. So then what do we do? Well, we go to look at the face of Jesus, but also to listen to his voice communicate to us as we share our hearts with him. We have to realize that when we're in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament, we're cultivating a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Just as any other relationships go in our families and our friends and the people that we date, in the beginning, there's typically a lot of speaking that happens. We share our hearts, we listen to the other person's heart. But then at some point, we transition from a lot of talking and a lot of listening to just simply being in the presence of the other person. To help us to listen to the voice of the beloved of Jesus in adoration, we need to bring the Bible with us and listen to him speak his heart directly to us. The scriptures are the voice of God. St. Jerome said, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. Then after we hear his heart, we can share our hearts. There are many different ways that we can share our hearts with Jesus, but one way I like is a method called ARRR. -R -R. It's acknowledge, relate, receive, respond. Acknowledge our thoughts, feelings, desires. Relate them to Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, and then spend time in adoration receiving from him after we've shared our hearts with him from his word. And then after that, come up with some kind of response based on the time that we spent acknowledging, relating, and receiving from Jesus Christ in prayer. This is a practical thing that we can do when we're in the presence of Christ. Another thing we could do is we could bring the rosary with us. And whenever we pray the rosary, we could incorporate the model of Lexio Divina with the meditations of the rosary. So Lexio Divina, real quick, what is that? Well, Lexio Divina has, has four parts to it. Um, I like to add a fifth step. Lexio Divina's four steps plus my fifth step are the following. Number one, read. What does the text say in and of itself? Number two, meditate. What does the text say to me? Number three, pray. Have a conversation with God about what the text is saying to me. Number four, contemplate. This is where we simply sit in the presence of the beloved. We gaze at his face and he gazes at our faces. And then finally, I like to come up with a resolution. Based on our time reading and meditating, praying, contemplating, what's some concrete action I can take with me, I can discern with the Spirit of God as I leave adoration? The point of adoration is imitation of God. We wanna imitate our Savior, Jesus Christ. Anytime we spend time with people, we become more like the people we hang out with. And so the more we spend time with Jesus, the more we're gonna be like Jesus. And Jesus was about right worship. So the first fruit of Eucharistic adoration is we're gonna be drawn to worship God according to the way that God wants to be worshiped. But outside of worship, we're also gonna be thinking with the mind of Christ throughout the rest of our day, speaking with the voice of Christ and acting with the actions of Christ. This action of Lexio Divina can be applied to the Word of God, the sacred scriptures. This action can be applied to the rosary. This action can be applied to the catechism of the Catholic Church. And this action can be applied to the lives of the saints, their stories, the stories of these men and women who have preceded us in our walk toward eternity. So if you check out my book, Pocket Guide to Adoration, uh, you will gain these resources and my own personal experiences of spending time before the Eucharist with the scriptures, the rosary, the catechism, and the lives of the saints as a way to help you to engage in a deeper intimacy with Jesus Christ 
in Eucharistic Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. If you go to citrapress.com, you can learn more about this upcoming resource, Pocket Guide to Adoration. From all of us here at Ascension Presents, my name is Father Josh Johnson. God bless.